Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by the homestead. As you can see, we started getting supplies for our next project. It's going to be a 30 by 50 foot pole barn, uh, wood posts and metal trusses. Uh, this week we're going to be building the uh, wet set cement brackets for the wood posts. Let's go check it out. So this is our supplies for our uh, 12 wet set cement brackets we're going to need. Doing some research online, I found they're going for about 100 to 150 bucks per pop. Uh, they are going with a six by six posts um, without any standoff from the cement. So figured I'd probably make them cheaper myself. Uh, doing the math, I found that for the same price of two, I can build 12 myself and have some scrap metal left over. I'm also, just due to prices right now of metal, actually got uh, thicker metal for cheaper, which is pretty good. Well, cool. Let me get it cut up and uh, I'll show you what I'm thinking. First up, I'm going to cut the 3 8 inch rebar. Because this is the part going to the cement and the distance is going to be perfect, I'm using this stand here to kind of stop to get relatively the same length. Next, I'm going to cut my 1 inch wide flat stock, 8 inch thick. It's going to be the same width as my post, so it's going to be five and a half inches. I put this wood stop block in to get the same distance every time. With metal prices being what they are, it turned out to be cheaper for me to get this six inch wide quarter inch flat stock than it was to get five inch wide. As you can see, my large cutoff wheel wasn't working, so I had to go to the death trap. These end up being 13 inches long. We've got 24 plates with 48 repeatable holes, so it's time to make a jig. Makes it more accurate and safer. I'm using a step bit here to drill the holes to half inch. I have old motor oil I use from the cutting fluid. Next it's time to clean all the welding surfaces. Just using the flat disc grinder to grind on all the edges. So as you all can see, I got three major components for these uh, brackets here. I went ahead and made a, a jig or a little spacer to make assemble a little quicker. I'll show you how I made it real quick in this video right here. Yep, so this will really help make sure it's always evenly spaced, which is that five and a half inches for the post. This way is not as thick, but that's okay. It's really just this side, it's important. Let's get it going. We got everything grounded down to pretty much bare metal. Spacer in. Just to make sure it doesn't fall over for now. It doesn't be tight just so that it doesn't fall. Get our flat edge here. Make sure we get this nice and square. this out of the way. Give me a cricket. So we're nice and square there. Put one of these spacers in. Put the bevel down. Just like that. Put this spacer in where with the bevels against the thickest part. Put the sharpest bezel towards the top. Then we have to do less grinding on our weld. At this point, make it just a little bit tighter. Put 
Put our top piece in. Like such. Let's check it. Perfect. Tie it again a little bit. Flush it along here. Make sure to flush here. All right, lock in place. One last check. Square there. Square there. Square there. Perfect. Cool. So I'm attacking these side pieces real quick. Got a little small gap in the bottom, see if I can't pull it out real quick. Perfect. I'm closing my eyes between welds and looking away, in case y'all are wondering. Let's just check it again, make sure. Pretty good. Pretty good. Still straight. I'm just gonna throw welds in all the corners. All right, it's ready to burn it in now. So I'm gonna crank up the juice. I just tacked it at an eighth inch thick. This is all quarter inch, I'm gonna crank it up. Crank the welder up. Thicker glove, it's gonna get real hot in a second. Let it cool for a little bit. As you can see, it's smoking. I forgot to do one thing before I start welding in. <laughs> Pull the wood back away from it. There we go. Cool. Now we'll let it cool down. All right, well, let's flip it over and do the next side. All right, well, here are my welds. As you can see, they're the prettiest things, but they'll definitely get the job done. That was a little too much voltage, but that's okay. All right, I'll go ahead and fill in all these cracks. I'm gonna turn the welder down and then fill all these cracks in and all these sides with the welder set at uh, just an eighth because these other four welds are gonna be the structural aspect of it. Those are definitely strong enough. And these final welds are kind of just clean it up a little bit and uh, just kind of keep water out of areas in the cracks. All right, let me get to it. All right, and there's everything grounded down. If this was for uh, ornamental or would be seen more, I'd probably make it look even nicer, but it's just some brackets for a pole barn, so as long as it holds together, it doesn't have to be the prettiest thing back there. All right, well, one down, lots more to go. All right, well, I got the 12 uh, brackets done. Next thing is to do is to uh, get the rebar here, weld it onto it. I'll be doing four pieces of rebar down in all four corners here on each base plate. That way I have plenty of surface area to weld. Before I do that though, I actually want to make a loop, a curve, and then the rebar so that it's not just the frictional force along this that's holding uh, the brackets into the cement. Uh, it's actually the curve as well, right? Because it's going to provide all the tension force while the uh, cement's doing all the compression force. So to do that, I'm make a little jig real quick. I have some scrap pieces, just a little curved pipe angle iron and stop. So let me uh, build it up and I'll show you what I'm working with.
Well, thanks for sticking to the end. As you can see, I got all 12 brackets welded up and painted. Uh, part two is going to be uh, setting them in the pillars of cement. All right, till next time, y'all come back now.